Hello, this is Chris Maynard from CMIVFX, and this lesson is going to be about making a ocean wave. Now, we're talking about a single ocean wave, animatable and uh, sort of rigged, and we're going to be doing something that I kind of uh, invented going on over 10 years ago for Maya, and it was a huge hit back in the day, and uh, it like spread like wildfire. And then over the time, uh, course of time that is, we noticed a lot of changes inside of uh, different apps, and this technique sort of like fell to the wayside, people just forgot about it. And uh, someone mentioned it to me the other day, and they said, listen, I really would like to know how to do this in a couple other apps besides Maya, and if I could give them a shot. So I figured, uh, why not, let's go ahead and do it. And uh, I also created a little bit of a reference between um, the Arnold renderer with the solution and also the standard renderer. And we're going to talk about both of those. And also, if you wanted to add the ocean spray, this isn't going to be an, a particle class, but uh, ocean spray would be something like uh, maybe projecting a curve onto your foremost edge or something like that and basically uh, you know driving particles from that curve here actually I have it disconnected but you get the general idea uh, apps like uh, X particles would be much more suited for this uh, thinking particles uh, of course you could go ahead and build uh, some kind of solution in there and each one of them will have its own particular value now when you're dealing with particles obviously you're gonna want to uh, use some sort of volumetrics with this or you're gonna have to do a lot of treatment on the particles like blur motion blur and uh, different types of glows and then you're gonna have to add the fake shadows a lot of people don't know how to do all this stuff because they're not really compositor friendly but uh, you know like I said if you're going to use uh, sort of an open VDB approach to the whole thing, maybe you can go back and forth between um, Houdini as well and combine it with all the new tools that are out there. Okay, so let's go ahead and just uh, bypass this and let's, let's take a look at the actual lesson of importance here. We're going to be using the Pose Morph tool and this is generally a character tool. But what I've done is I'm going to show you how to basically set up all different types of uh, pose morphs and we're just going to go ahead and animate the wave uh, by hand. Now we can do this in several different ways. Uh, for us we're just going to be doing a small segment but for you you might want to combine more ocean wave to the outside of this so that you can render out a giant flat uh, wave that goes on for time. Now when you add transparency to a shader what happens is you're going to be able to see through the bottom. So technically speaking, if you're going to do something like that, you'd want to have a shader with transparency, which is very tricky. Uh, if you're going to add transparency, you're going to need to do a little bit of a different workflow. So if you have like a dolphin or something like that, that's going to be riding inside of the wave, uh, you're going to have to adjust the outside borders uh, over here around the outside edge. You're going to have to expand those out into near affinity. Otherwise, uh, you're going to be able to see a dark line from the um, second if you create like an additional outside uh, piece of water and stitch it you're going to see a difference between the textures because we're also going to be animating the textures over time going in this direction now the workflow for that between Arnold and uh, standard cinema 4d is different in cinema 4d you just uh, well we'll get to that so let's go ahead and get started and let's set up our user interface so I can explain that next oh, 